we're going to do it. It's summertime and I'm so excited. So <laughs> I don't, I was, I was, oh, hold on. I got to do a mute on Miss Romelia there. Um, so let me have her. I got you girl. So we've been gathering ideas for some fun summer things to share with you guys. And each year we like to do like, we already did the great first aid kit. We've done some like what to pack before you go on a trip. Um, we've been doing lots of posts in our Facebook groups on ideas for great recipes, but it's always so much more fun when you can hang out together and share some ideas and recipes, especially cause like, we're all like, oh, this is what I do. That's what I do. You know? So I like that it kind of explodes it open and we get to have more of a conversation about it. So we've got a whole sort of array of summer cold treats, baked treats, cocktails, just icy yummy drinks, um, refreshing things to share with you guys today. And we're just going to jump in because we have a lot. Um, of course, are always traveling about whether it's in town or not, Miss Romelia. <laughs> from Casa Walter's Essentials is here today. I'll introduce everyone as they are about to do their first recipe, but um, she is in Midland, Texas with a very thirsty group of folks waiting on, what is it gonna be? She's gotta unmute. A blackberry, well, actually it's a mixed berry margarita today. Ooh, okay. Mixed and it's a very fruity, very easy. And um, I'll start with this. Do you want me to go ahead and start? Yes, yeah, girl. Okay. yeah. All right, so I made a simple syrup. Um, all I did is just, I got a bag of frozen mixed berries, added it to a pot, three cups of water, three cups of sugar, um, and just let that, um, you know, boil a little bit. It's really fragrant. I didn't add any oils to this one. Um, I'm letting people choose what oils they want. And it just tastes really delicious, you guys. If I were to let this go a little bit longer, it would probably evaporate a little bit more and you could use it over desserts or pancakes, something like that. We've done that before and it tastes really, really yummy. So this one's really easy. Um, I'm gonna start with the kids. I, you can use this syrup for just, you know, non-alcoholic refreshing drinks. So I'm gonna start with the kids. I told them that I would start with them first. Um, and I don't have like a, I don't measure anything. <laughs> I just pour and go. So just That's a little bit of, of the syrup on the bottom, exactly. <laughs> just, just pour and go. And um, we're using a blackberry sparkling water. And um, Seth, wanted, Seth wanted lime. So just a drop of oil in there. And Sarah's having a tangerine in hers. So just, to, just a drop of oil in there before I pour the sparkling water. And that's really it for this. You can give it a stir if you'd like. Um, and it's, you know, really light and refreshing. It tastes really yummy, not overly sweet. That's what I really like about it because it's not like sugary sweet, right? Yeah. Um, you can put a lime in there. Sarah will take a lime, Seth one. Um, and for my drink, basically the same thing. I have a glass that I've, um, salted the rim, some ice in here. I do the same thing. I'm gonna put tangerine in mine too. So just like a drop of tangerine. Uh, Romelia, can I ask you something? It's starting to rain here, you guys. Um, Is that the tequila that's then, in the bottom of your glass already? Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> the that tequila's coming. Melted. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I just put the simple syrup first. A shot of tequila. I'm not driving. <laughs> Yeah, and then a splash you. of triple sec in here. And then top it off with the same um, sparkling water. And it's really refreshing. I love this. Um, I made this the first time a couple of weeks ago. And oh my gosh, I just fell in love. It's my new summer drink. It's delicious. Oh, that sounds perfect. Mm. That Ooh. looks so yummy. It is. Oh my, you have to try it. I think what it is, it's a, it's the syrup because it has that fruity berry flavor yeah. that just takes this to a different level. So when you, you said you put, did you do like a whole, like one of those sort of regular grocery store size frozen bags? Yes. I just grabbed berries? one from the freezer. Yeah. Just one of those bags and berries? stuck it in the, yeah. And you, did you have to crush them or they were already kind of like, you know, nope. 
nope, I just put the berries in the pot and added the water and the sugar and just let it go. About for, for about five minutes. After it came to a boil, I just kind of let it simmer for about five minutes and then strain the fruit. Now there's still a little bit of, um, it's probably the raspberry seeds. There's still a little bit in there because yeah. those are just really challenging. I didn't have any cheesecloth. Didn't even think about that when I was at the store, but yeah, oh but well, that still still works. Makes it country style, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because you know they were born and raised in a barn, <laughs> <laughs> in a in a van down by the water, right? Down by so, the river, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. So what did you? I bet you could do something pretty cool with the like strained fruit. Like if you had like a cheesecake or something, you could just put that on it. <laughs> I sure. Mean, you can put that in like, ice cubes. You can make some really ooh, interesting ice cubes oh. with that. Oh, I love that idea. You could even add a little bit of oils to it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if you would be able to use it like for a jam or something because you've already, you know, extracted all of the sweetness from it. Yeah. Essence. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but that sounds good. Yeah. Now there's a lot of ideas stirring in my head. Very <laughs> yummy. Wow. All right. Well, enjoy that. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to go pass them off. Okay. So we're going to go to Susan. Susan, what do you have on par? All for, right. You know, well, what do you bring? I'm going to actually follow up um, Romelia's idea with a very similar idea. That's again, super easy. And it's um, a cranberry lime spritzer. <clears throat> so I'm very lazy. And so I don't do the simple syrup, <laughs> but um, all you need for this is some cranberry juice some sparkling water, <clears throat> or if you prefer, you can use like a lemon lime soda if you, if you want soda in there and um, ice cubes and some lime oil. My preference is lime. I think lime and cranberry together are so good. Mm -hmm. So all you're going to do is glass of ice, half cranberry juice, half sparkling water or um, soda, whatever you choose, and a drop to three <laughs> of lime. I usually, you know, I usually use like a 20 ounce mason jar that I make this in and that's like three drops of lime for me and then stir it up. And it's the simplest thing ever, but it's so yummy and very, um, uh, refreshing, you know, when it's so hot. So it's a oh, nice yeah. drink and, you know, great for kids too, if you want something non-alcoholic for kids. Well, and it's really just lower sugar, you know, than a soda, Absolutely. even a sweet tea. Right. And the you know? fact that you can do it with just, um, and when I say cranberry juice, I'm using like a cranberry cocktail. Right. So it's, you know, it's not as tart as like a, it's not the true, the real, the real deal, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, it has a little, no, that's not pleasant. Like oh yeah. You know, you've bought the wrong thing. <laughs> the thing right with there. the real deal. Yeah, exactly. Um, but because of that, it has its own little, you know, inherent sweetness. Cause it has some apple juice usually in there or some grape juice. So I can do this for my kids without any soda. We don't, we don't, we're not really soda drinkers. And so we just do the sparkling water and cranberry juice. And it's got just enough sweetness, but not overly sweet that I enjoy it too. Yeah. And it's refreshing so. in the summer. Cause it's too much. Sweet. Absolutely. I can't do too much sweet. And by the way, that's Susan Velasquez from Epiphany Essentials. I did forget to introduce her <laughs> at the beginning of her sharing. I apologize for that. Um, no problem. But no, it is really good. And I, I know that um, my, my kids love it. I'm going to talk on my turn about a simple syrup and it's so easy to have. And then they just pour a little bit over ice, just like Romelia did and add just, we call it fuzzy water, but you know, fizzy water, whatever. Um, you know, whichever one is the one they had at Costco that week and top it off. It's so good. And it's way less sugar. Yeah. Um, especially when you add, you get so much flavor from that little bit of oil, like a couple drops or three, like Susan says, <laughs> really good, really, really good. So Tammy, you had a tangerine lemonade. Is that right? Yes. And th this also is super duper easy to make. Um, and it's non-alcoholic but you can uh, add some vodka if you want to. So you get lemonade. Now I do the hard way. I buy my lemons and I juice my lemons and then I add a little bit of sugar, but you can also buy organic lemonade. And then you just add two drops of tangerine to like one of those big bottles and two drops of spearmint. And it, it is so refreshing and it just is super refreshing. And then if you want to, spike it you can add a little bit of vodka or tequila whatever your choice is and it's super easy especially if you just buy the the container of lemonade and it's just 
So shake it up. That's amazing. I love the idea. Um, I have a cocktail with spearmint that I'm going to share. Spearmint. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's like so good. opens the world up. You know, I don't know how to describe it. That's all I can think of is it's like it explodes flavor mm -hmm. from all the other things. It's a weird way to describe mm -hmm. it, but try it. It does the same thing in your blends. When you're making a blend, one drop of spearmint just opens it all up. But in your drink, it's like, oh, this is amazing. You're like, Remember what were those candies or something that people would bite and then it would be like a snowstorm or whatever? Like that's <laughs> that's where I'm going. you know I don't know, but you know what I mean? Like it's so your peppermint patties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, what is that? It's like so refreshing. You just can't the degree of refreshment that you're getting from a drink with that in it is just beyond what you think possible. Does that make sense? So well, anyway. and what I really like about it is that the tangerine is like one of the ones that's highest grapefruit and tangerine highest in limonene and yeah. they're so good for your body so just ingesting that on its own and the tangerine it's interesting because the tangerine helps do something to the lemonade but then the spearmint knocks it up a, a bunch so it's just amazing the other thing i like to do with the tangerine is um instead of doing orange juice and mimosas I just yeah. do a drop of tangerine in my champagne and that's also very good. So yeah, that's absolutely what we do. I was actually going to share that, but I don't oh, have it. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 not, not today. I, I, I didn't have it on my list. I thought about it, but I was like, I don't have any champagne actually. And that's Tammy Lane from, um, from pure plant oils. Okay. She's traveling right now, coming from Bakersfield, California. California. We'll see where she's at next time we see her. Um, uh, but okay, so I'm Carrie, Raven's Nest Essentials, and I'm going to first talk about a Paloma. If you've never had a Paloma, oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. So Manny and I became addicted to these in Florida. Um, it is absolutely so refreshing and delicious. And we would order them. It was interesting because some people knew, you know, like you would order um, like at a bar, but we were usually outdoor because, you know, it was outdoors, everything. So people around would hear you ordering and you, sometimes we'd have to describe it. And I can't tell you how many times people are like, what did you just order? Cause it's, it's so refreshing and it sounds refreshing. So what it is, is it's tequila, whatever your favorite tequila. Um, you want to use a, a silver, maybe a reposado, but not, you don't want to go into the anejos on this. Cause you know, it's kind of a waste. Um, and then you're going to add to it some grapefruit. Now here's where it gets kind of interesting because you can have some different choices of grapefruit and what you choose does make a big difference. Okay. Typically at a bar, they're going to have these because it's grapefruit juice and they don't make a lot of drinks with fresh grapefruit juice. So they're going to have like these little cans. This is the only one we had here in the North Valley today that I could track down. <laughs> this one does have sugar added to it, but typically you're going to get at a bar or someplace you can get them where it's just hundred percent pure grapefruit. Notice this is a ruby red, or excuse me, it's not even a ruby red. It's a pink grapefruit juice. So this is just a, a farce. So, but nonetheless, it's about this much. All right. And they will usually pour the whole thing. So you get, it's usually a double shot of tequila, two ounces, right? Um, over ice topped with fresh grapefruit juice or grapefruit juice, and then sparkling water, and then a little bit of fresh lime. It is absolutely the lightest zero sugary taste, but you get that nice tequila sort of summer vacation vibe going without all the sugar that you get from adding the mixes and stuff that say a typical margarita would have, but you still get that what you want from a margarita is the tequila, a citrus, you know what I mean? And like easy to drink, right? But we have found other things that we, you know, we've been playing with it. All right. We've been experimenting with our Palomas. So the other thing is, is I love the Newton, you know, this is a true just grapefruit juice. Um, so you look at the label, there's nothing in here, but grapefruit juice. This tastes amazing. And you're just, I, we do like an equal amount. So however much tequila we put in, we put an equal amount of the hundred percent pure grapefruit juice and top it off with the sparkling water. We also add to it, our grapefruit oil, a couple drops of grapefruit oil and a couple drops of lime. So I'm going to give you the order here. Um, but I'm trying to show you the different varieties of grapefruit. So then we got lazy. 
because you know we were traveling in an RV and sometimes big glass bottles like this in the fridge were not always the best option. And Costco has the fever tree, grapefruit, sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> All in one, right? So then you just have your tequila and this and your oil, some ice, and you are going to town and it is absolutely delicious. So the best way to make it, like if you're not, you know, just pulling up to the campsite, get everything set up and you're like, God, I need a Paloma. That's when you do this one. When you're like, oh, we just made that, we just grilled dinner and we're going to sit down and have ourselves a nice Paloma. This is the way you do it. You're going to take in a shaker, like a, you know, um, your tequila and then your oils. All right. And your grapefruit juice, put them in there, shake them really well, pour that over ice and then just top it off with the sparkling water. It is unbelievable you will be addicted to it Romelia it's really close to the one that you're enjoying so much except for instead of a berry it's a grapefruit you know what I mean it's just kind of a little different it doesn't have the triple sec and it doesn't have the simple syrup so it's very low calorie so I mean so if you're trying to like just get your spirits in you without all the other stuff because you're watching your calories and you want them to be based in the alcohol and not so much the sugars there you go. It's a great choice for that. Um, we love them very much. I don't put anything on the rim. We keep it really simple. Um, I will tell you another tip. It's fantastic with vodka. Just switch out vodka. It's even lighter, even less calories, right? Um, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of this vodka here, the Kettle One. We discovered this, um, actually, Susan, Tammy, and I and Clea, who's, who's not on here today, discovered this in Salt Lake City at a doTERRA event uh, a little over a year ago. And um, yes, yeah, she's still been a favorite. And if you've never tried it, oh, it's good. There's a lot of brands that make it and they're all delicious. All right, but this one's very readily available. So um, really, really good. Doesn't have anything added so much as far I, as- I feel like we should say that was at the after party, not at the doTERRA <laughs> event. Oh, okay. Well, no, because people were like, oh, I didn't even know. I'm coming to doTERRA. <laughs> doTERRA events. Well, let me tell well, you. When you go there, doTERRA, there will be an after party. I was going to say, if you go to doTERRA <laughs> events with us, you get the cocktail party that comes after every big meeting, right? So there you go. But yeah, so I, I mean, you know, it, it was really a lot of fun, but this is delicious on its own, right? I mean, even if you're not a vodka person, it's delicious. So adding a little bit of that to that same mix is it's just refreshing. It's light, you know, yeah, Tammy. And I would probably, because I like salty dogs, I would even use gin with that and salt yeah. the room of the glass. Yeah, that if you like delicious. that, I don't know why I can't do like the salty rim, but I'm not, you know, but and I can't do a sugar either. I'm not good. I do like, and I'm going to talk about this in a later drink is just put a little grapefruit oil on your finger and just line the rim of the glass. Oh my gosh. Like if you make this for a friend, they're going to think that like you've gone to like, you know, bartending school, which I'm sure has a much more sophisticated name, mixologist technology <laughs> Academy. <laughs> and, and that you've come up but it's really easy and in the summertime it's so light and like Tammy said you're going to get the really good you know um, benefits coming from the the limonene that you get through your lime and through your grapefruit grapefruit is also particularly wonderful at supporting metabolism you know you might be just kind of balancing things out a little bit in this case but hey that's better than better than nothing right I think it works pretty well <laughs> anyway so Romelia what, are you making another cocktail over there? What you got? She's over there on another cocktail. Is this for someone? Are you still being bartender? Oh, you are. She's still on <laughs> cocktails. I see. Yes, I, I'm, I'm making another round here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me go to Susan then, because I think she's got some baked goods yeah. up her sleeve. And we'll let you finish. Sure. Everyone's done. Everyone's done. I do. And, you know, I yeah. thought about. You're in, you're somebody in that drink that. over there. <laughs> <laughs> You may not feel like baking in summer. I get that. We we have a very unseasonably cool week this week, and it's absolutely, I almost don't want to say it because I'm afraid it'll go away. It's so beautiful right now after a scorcher a couple of weeks prior to this. So I'm very grateful for some cool weather. So we've been enjoying some things that we might not be normally doing in the you know end of June, beginning of July, but this is a very easy um, cookie recipe. And what's really fun about it, I think, is that it's um, gluten-free. 
and dairy free. So very friendly for whoever you have in your household who is, um, you know, needs, needs those restrictions, but my kids are not either. And they all ate them. They were, they were gone. The, the few samples they had the first time were gone very quickly. And today I'm holding on to them till after dinner, but this is a really easy recipe. And I'm going to show you what they look like. I did make up a batch. So some- I did them a little bit differently than last time. I'm going to tell you what I discovered that worked really well. So um, we're going to share these recipes later on, but I'm just going to kind of give you the ingredients for right now. So it's almond flour, um, two cups of blanched almond flour, a third of a cup of dried shredded coconut, but you want the unsweetened coconut. So you probably need to get that from a health food store and not like your standard, you know, grocery store. Um, it just has a different kind of a texture and it holds together differently than the moist, you know, sweetened kind of cake kind of coconut. Um, then a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a third of a cup of melted coconut oil. And you probably could use, you know, whatever oil you want to use there, but I did use the coconut oil and a third of a cup of honey, a teaspoon of vanilla. And I use 12 drops of um, lemon oil. And honestly, I think I could even, I upped it last time was 10. This time I did 12. I think I could wind up topping out somewhere around 16 because I really want a little bit more. I want a little more lemon out of them. But all you're going to do is mix all that together. It's super easy and it's going to make kind of a crumbly dough. But when you go to like squeeze it, it's kind of like wet sand, you know, it's kind of crumbly until you squeeze it together and then it holds together. And then you're going to put it on um, a cookie sheet with parchment. And the parchment makes it so that it's super easy, doesn't stick, comes off nicely, but the, the crust on the bottom still browns nicely. So it's still, you can kind of see that's the bottom versus the top, you know, still kind of gets nice. And then um, you can bake them for anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes. So you'll have to kind of see your oven and how cooked you want them. We ended up finding our sweet spot was 11 minutes because I wanted them um, a little bit crispy on the outside, but still with that nice coconut chew on the inside and nicely browned. So that worked out well for us. But the trick is once you make that little ball, you want to take a glass or you can even use a, a, your measuring cup, you know, whatever has a flat bottom, um, dip it in a little bit of sugar and then use it to squash that, that cookie ball. And then you're going to squash it down to about a quarter of an inch. Don't be afraid to go, you know, it seems like it's going to fall apart, but it really doesn't. And then bake it. And that the fact that it's already flattened means that you're going to get a wider, less dense, you know, it's not going to be like this. It's going to be more like this, um, you know, like a quarter of an inch rather than like a half an inch. And um, to me, that gave a, a much better texture. So there's the tips and tips and tricks Dude. for that one. Susan made these. Susan is Grayson's adopted um, real mom that um, <laughs> makes him yummy gluten free dairy. I shouldn't say that. Allegra makes made Grayson a wonderful batch of these and gone. Like <laughs> I was like, hey, what I want? <laughs> he just gobbled them. You know, it was he, he, Grayson can't have gluten or dairy. So fresh baked goods are very hard. So this sounds so doable. Cause usually, I mean, you got, you have a list of ingredients that are like 15 long. Cause you got to bring in the Zanthum gum and the, exactly. like this stuff. It's usually really like, tricky whoa. and weird things that you don't typically have. If you yeah. are not cooking for an entire family, you know, with gluten issues. all the time. Exactly. So it's one right. of those things where, you know, back when he started with this, which was a really long time ago, that was really the only recipes So I tried and then I just said, you know, they'll make some eventually and stores do have them, but they're nowhere near as good. They're just, they always kind of have that same blah and the texture's weird. He loved them. They're delicious. And the lemon. Super yummy because it's doTERRA lemon, right? (laughs) So it's good. And if, you know, um, even my child who is not a coconut person really liked these. I just didn't say anything about coconut being in there. And um, he tried them and, and came back for more. So don't let the coconut scare you off. Um, no. But if you like a coconut cookie, like a macaroon kind of a cookie, you'll love them. I don't even think he noticed that it wasn't very coconut forward. Like you're no, saying. It's, I was completely agree. And I think that's the difference between the unsweetened coconut has a very different texture and it's a little bit more flaky than kind of the stringy texture of regular coconut. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So they were a big hit and so much easier than like I was trying to say before my internet went drunk, um, the, uh, the typical recipe. So really cool. Absolutely. Um, okay. Miss Ramelia, how's things over there in the barn? How are the, how come to us from the party barn? <laughs> all right. So these are not healthy at all. <laughs> but I'm going to share with you just so you know. Um, but we have, we have a family coming over, more family coming over, and we're having um, our Taco Tuesday. So these are our desserts for today. Um, the recipe says it's no bake. The, the end product is not baked, but you do have to bake the shells um, when you get them. And um, okay. this is a what mini cheese, mini no bake lemon cheesecake, something or the other. Um, so... <laughs> well somebody needs to get in there and start cooking um so it's very very easy um you take the shells you have to bake them first maybe about 15 20 minutes depending on what brand you're getting excuse me guys give me a minute and i'll feed you <laughs> um so just bake your shells um before and then just let them cool off right and so you get eight ounces of cream cheese. So I had to triple the recipe because these are not mini. These are like those, um, I don't know, you buy, I've seen like pecan pie like in this sh shape, right? It's like three inches. So it was a lot bigger than what I had expected. Um, so I had to triple the recipe on these. Um, but the, the recipe itself just calls for one eight ounce um, cube rectangle bar, whatever, of uh, green cheese, make sure that it's softened because you're going to have to beat this. You're going to have to whip it. And you really need that soft along with butter. This asked for a tablespoon of butter with that recipe. Um, and it just really made it very, very creamy. Um, you add a cup of powdered sugar to this, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then the recipe called for 30 drops of lemon oil I found that that was way too much. We found our spot, our sweet spot, like about 20. It was just enough to flavor the cream and not make it too tart. And we weren't going for tart, we were going for sweet. Um, so that really worked out. And then after you get that really nice and whipped up, um, you can add lemon juice to get it to the consistency that you want. Um, I was looking for something very creamy, light and fluffy. It turned out really well when I started putting them into the, the you know, little pie crust um, shell. It was really, it was a really nice smooth texture to it. Um, so what I'm planning on doing with this, and this is completely optional. I just have a family that really likes whipped cream. So topping it off with just a little swirl and then some, uh, you know, fruit. We had raspberries and strawberries in. Can you see that? That's we had so raspberries nice. and strawberries in the fridge. So I'm going to be the first to taste it <laughs> um, before I share it with somebody else. But I know that when I was putting this into the pie shell, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, when we were, when I was putting it into the pie shell, it was really creamy um, and airy. So I really like that. Oh, I love lemon cheesecake. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm surprised that it's not as sweet as I thought it was gonna be. With the with the powdered sugar in there. Yeah. It's not very sweet. I can taste the lemon. Lemon is lovely. It's very light. And then that, mm, it, this is really good. Um, but you don't have to bake this. You just fill your little pie crust, um, your little tart shells, whatever it is that you have. Um, I think you could even do this like on a graham cracker to make it even more easy, you know, just a quick little sweet snack or sweet dessert um, and chill it. Uh, I think it's been in the fridge maybe now for about a couple of hours. So it really mm -hmm. sat in there, but this is delicious. I haven't made this before and I'm happy that I made it today because <laughs> I'll be making it again. I have no qualms about desserts. You guys know that. <laughs> Take some pictures before they're all gone because it looks adorable <laughs> too. Like they look really cute, you know? They're yeah. delicious. Oh, it's yeah. not overpowering. That's what I really like about it. Anything. Sorry, I'm 
talking with my mouth full. But I had to taste know, it. If you want to do your own whipped cream as opposed to getting it out of a jar, you can add any oil that you want. Like that sounds like maybe a spearmint or or Air X. Trixie yeah. made a whipped cream with Air X, and she said it was yeah. divine. Right. That sounds amazing. Wow. I love it. I love it. Yay! So we had baking. All right. Maybe I should do my. Should I do a dessert one now? And then we can go back to other stuff. <laughs> so sure. mine is really, mine is the easiest of them all because can you guys hear me? Okay. Am I all right? Cause I figured yep. out what it was as um, a child was using the microwave. So I had to do a little switching on the internet. So I have, I'm doing what is here. I'm sure you guys have probably seen the yogurt um, bark, the yogurt, the lemon yogurt fruit bark, right? Which is beyond, it's literally no bake. You freeze it. Okay. But as we already covered, I have a kid who can't have yogurt, okay? But also, I'm getting stuff out of my little suitcase of fun. Um, my, I have two other kids who, if you say the word yogurt, they're like, they automatically start the gag reflex. I don't know, they're just like, oh, yogurt. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but they are not down with yogurt. They do eat other stuff that I, you know, and by the way, they eat yogurt without knowing sometimes, sorry, but it's true. Um, Cause I like to use yogurt like in sauces and stuff, you know? but nonetheless. So this is the easiest recipe that you could ever make. I did switch it out to the coconut milk um, version, you know, a coconut yogurt, if you will. All right. There are many brands. This is the one my local grocery store had and I ran with it. Okay. So you're going to take this entire container and to this I mean, I added the, we, we did a trial run on this before I did not use this brand. Um, but like I said, this was the only one I could find. I feel like the one that I had before was a little thicker. Um, but this is still, this is good. He'll like it. Um, so I added only eight drops of the lemon essential oil to it. So you're just going to put that directly in this container and mix it up really well. Then you're going to line a cookie sheet with like, um, a parchment paper. Okay. And then you pour it out onto there and spread it evenly across the entire cookie sheet so that you get it down to, you know, half an inch or so in thickness. And then you're just gonna take your fresh fruit, okay? Now I am gonna throw a plug in here about fresh fruit. You really wanna go ahead and pre-wash your fruit. And a great way to do that is to rinse it just in some water with lemon oil. It will help to take off all of the weird waxy, and gosh, you know, like strawberries, it, oh, they're just like apparently the most toxic thing that you could ever eat because of the way that they hold on to the pesticides and such. So be sure and let them sit. I like to let them sit. Hi, Miss Jim. I like to let them sit in that for, you know, as long as it takes me to do this whole other part. You know what I mean? 10 minutes, maybe. Um, if I'm being slow and interrupted by children, which is the typical around my life. But <laughs> then go ahead and drain the water off. They'll be nice and clean. And then just sprinkle them on. So in this case, I'm doing this super duper lazy. I'm not even slicing strawberries. I've got raspberries and blueberries. This would be so cute for 4th of July if you're a 4th of July out and about kind of person or just even at home. Yeah, I know Tammy's birthday, right? 4th of July is your birthday. Is that right? Yes, it is. See, God, I feel so proud of myself. Um, but I'm a firecracker. Yeah, she's a firecracker. <laughs> we all knew that about you. So this is a great thing. So what you do, you just spread the fruit all over it. You've already got the lemon flavor in your coconut yogurt and you put it in the freezer, leave it there for three to four hours or really the better thing is like overnight. I like to cover it um, with like a, not like touch down into the yogurt, but just kind of lightly just set on top of it another piece of parchment paper um, because I have a really old freezer and it'll, I don't want the fruit to get like little ice crystals on it. Um, and then you cut it up and serve it. Now you do want to serve it cold. So think of it like ice cream bites, right? So this is not something that you're going to take to the picnic far from home. You're going to take it to the picnic in your backyard <laughs> and be like, here's the yogurt bites, you know, or in this case, excuse me, no yogurt was ever made. <laughs> like kids can't hear that word. These are the, I'm going to be calling them, or I have called them the coconut ice cream bark. And oh, once you say that, they're a big hit and it is absolutely delicious. By the way, another tip on this, get the vanilla because the vanilla with the lemon, it's like, oh, it just, it's the perfect marriage of the two flavors. I'm telling you the easiest thing. I mean, 
you're spreading this on a platter and putting fruit on it and putting it in the freezer. It's that easy. So um, I can't imagine why anyone couldn't do that unless you don't have a freezer. So nice and cold and easy, delicious. So now we have our lovely Miss Joan here from Bosque Elm Essentials. Joan, what's, we're kind of taking turns going around instead of everybody firing off all of theirs. So what's your number one for us today? So the number one um, for you today, I did, um, I did a couple of quick and easy things, but the main one that I did, and I'll try and show it without like making a mess. Um, <laughs> this is, um, I did make this one. This is a white bean and roasted red pepper hummus. Amelia's <laughs> happy over there. And that has, it's super easy to make, right? Um, to make your own hummus. And I have, when come back around, I have a way to doctor up some store-bought hummus if you don't want to make your own, right? Um, but it's super easy. So this one was just a couple of cans of cannellini beans right? The white Italian beans, um, a little bit, probably about a quarter cup of tahini, a little bit of water, a little bit, a couple tablespoons maybe of olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Ooh. And then before putting that in, so I mix my oils in with the oil before I pour it in the blender. It helps. I think it helps to like spread it evenly. So you don't get a hit of oil somewhere. And so what I used in this one is I used, um, for that amount, I used three drops of lemon, two drops of wild orange, and one drop of rosemary. And then I actually tasted it and I felt like it needed a little extra rosemary. So I gave it one more, right? But be careful with the rosemary. It's so strong. Oh, and there's a garlic clove in there too. So don't forget that. Um, but you just put that either in the blender or your food processor and whiz it until it's smooth. I'm one of those people that likes a really smooth and creamy hummus. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I make mine. If you like it thicker, you can just, you know, use more beans or leave out a little bit of the water mm -hmm. or lessen the olive oil or tahini, whatever you want to do. You can make it a little bit thicker and then it makes a really nice sandwich spread right so you can do like all kinds of stuff with it and it's delicious i'm just gonna say <laughs> oh my gosh so i have questions because i'm really excited <laughs> uh the cannellini beans you're draining yeah. them first okay yes. so you're draining them because you're adding in the oils of the other yep. stuff drain and rinse you don't want the bean water from the cans right but i figure if you've never done it that might be a good point <laughs> yeah and then the roasted red bell pepper so I just bought a jar, right? Yeah. I just usually have some on hand. You can buy it, fire roasted red bell peppers in a jar, you know, in the section like with jarred capers and pickles and artichoke mm -hmm. hearts and stuff like that. It's in there. Yeah. That's an awesome thing just to have a jar of those in your pantry, in your fridge once it's open, because you can add those things to all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. You make this a little bit thinner and maybe toss a second piece chunk of the roasted red pepper in there and use it as a pasta sauce, mm. right? Or toss it like with some rice to make with some veggies to make a rice salad. I mean, there's so many things you can do with it once you get that basic thing down, which is that's to me, that's super fun because you make a batch and then you can use it a bunch of different ways. And did you say I in the, in the list, it, are you putting salt or pepper? Did so you I put, I put a little, I did put a little bit of salt in. Thank you. It's been a long day. No, no, um, I, cause I'm making it. So I'm, I'm yeah. taking notes. <laughs> so a little bit of salt into the blend and then okay. like a I, pig. I go just because my taste, I'm usually very low sodium. Mm -hmm. And so just a tiny bit of pinch and then I'll finish it at the end with some coarse sea salt on top and a little cracked pepper. Yum. I am and coming then you over. can like swirl that around with it. Screw it. I'm not making it. I'm just going to bike on over to your house. <laughs> <Jeff. laughs> Come on over. I made a big batch. I can't eat it all. She I thought about that. that I'm, like, I'm going to bring some over to you tomorrow. Because <laughs> I, I can't eat it all. 
<laughs> oh, that's so funny. It looks amazing. And you know, I, dude, you guys know how much I like rosemary in my hummus. I think I bring it to any of your houses anytime I've ever been there, right? But what's cool is, is you could do black pepper lime. You could, I mean, cause that, that's just a foundation that you could do any blend of oils in and totally change the whole mood of it. Well, that's you'll, the second. Oh, the other well, thing I have to like doctor up your, if you, you know, or you could make it yourself, but to doctor up a home, a different, it's a completely different flavor. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very cool. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Ha. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got another drink for you guys. And this one is even easier than the last one. So this was another discovery made this summer. And actually I'm going to tell the very funny story because how I discovered it is not how I would find that I normally would. We were, um, we went to a Coca-Cola. We don't, we rarely ever drink Coke or sodas. Right. Um, but in, we were in Disney Springs and they have a rooftop bar and there they have this deal where you can taste the different sort of Cokes, if you will, or this, the most popular sodas from all over the world made by Coke. And it's like a challenge. And the kids, we were like, we got to do this with the kids. Cause it's so fun. And you get three trays of these small sips of these different. So there's, you know, Italy, there's all these different places and they're absolutely, it's fascinating. Most are disgusting. And that makes it fun. It kind of reminds me of the birdies beans every flavor bean situation where you're like, this one's good. And the next one, you know, the kids are just wanting to spit it across the table and not have to swallow. So we had to go do it because it's just a fun thing to do. Well, while we're there and, you know, hanging out, I noticed that they have this drink called ranch water. So has anyone ever had a ranch water before? No. So all it is, is a Topo Chico. So Midwest or Midland, come on, Midland, come on, right? A Topo Chico, they open it up they pour off a little for your bro, right? They add a shot of tequila into the bottle and then a spritz of lime, and then they give it to you. It is absolutely delicious. And it is so cold and so refreshing, zero. So even if, if the Paloma, because the grapefruit, that brings in a little bit too much of a sweetness for you and you wanna completely get rid of any type of sweetness, go ranch water. But this is how we doctored it. I'm totally going to do that. Let's oh, hear how you doctored it. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Totally doing it. Let's do it. So good. So you also, by the way, this one, the one that I like it with is the twist of lime. Okay. You can also do it with plain. There's another one. I have one here somewhere that is the twist of grapefruit. Cause I'm a big grapefruit gal. So all we do with it to make it any different is we put ice, we pour our shot. It's better with a silver, which we don't typically have around the house. So, you know, whatever your favorite sort of margarita tequila is go with that um pour that over ice then add a couple drops of lime or whatever essential oil you want then pour the topo chico over and the effervescence like sort of like what you saw happen with romelia's first it really does mix and help the i you know the, the oil to just completely mix through it is amazing it is a good straw drink so you know get out your aluminum or whatever stainless steel straw aluminum I don't know um it is it's good even without that but you know you get the bubbles on your nose it is absolutely the best summer drink I it's it, it's so easy and so refreshing I it doesn't get any better it's it's now like a, I was stunned to watch them do it they popped it open poured out some you know <laughs> poured the tequila right in the bottle I was like <gasps> <laughs> it just keeps getting better. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I don't have that ice. I don't have an ice so maker. So easy. That's so easy. And oh I guess gosh. you can look it up, but there's like a story about like, you know, ranch hands. Like, you know what I mean? This is what you've got the Topo Chico, right? Because it's a very common, by the way, if you don't know, Topo Chico is just like a, a seltzer water. Okay. A uh, fuzzy water. I don't know. We call it fizzy water, whatever. Um, and it is really, really good. It is our favorite of the versions of a seltzer water or whatever you want to call it. What's it say it is? I can't read it. <laughs> I need, I need I to go sparkling water. water. Thank you. Or sparkling is the word water. I'm looking for. Um, so, <laughs> it, I mean, is that not amazing? But that added, I will say the added bit of the, you know, I like a little lime. I, I, when I do lime oil, I, has anyone else found this? If I do just the lime oil, I always like to add just one drop of either a grapefruit or a tangerine or so it almost it like rounds out the lime. No, no you guys like and I are doing it. We're pure no. lime. We're <laughs> lime purists. I'm good with just the lime. 
I like lime and, juice, but the oil, I like the oil, but I like like, and I'm always kind of like, mm, I want a little something else, you know what I mean? So I'll add some other citrus, one other, one drop of the other citrus to it. But I'm telling you in the world of super easy grab and go, if you're having a party, talk about the easiest thing in the world, inexpensive. There's no mixes, all that crap everywhere, stickiness. Besides that, the kids can grab them. Yeah. Kids can grab them and drink them or people who don't drink without the tequila and everything. <laughs> you can just be drinking out of the bottle. It's perfect. It's just yeah. Perfect. Just make sure that kids don't get yours by accident if you're doing it from the bottle. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, it's just the greatest discovery I've found this summer. That's or this pretty year. much how I drink. You know, I, I'm not a beer drinker. I don't really drink yeah. beer. I do like to have a little Corona around in the summer. And that's, that's how I do my Corona, just a little straight lime oil right into the bottle. And then halfway through, I got to add a couple more, but it's so good and so refreshing. And well, you add, don't miss the job of squeezing that piece of lime down into the bottle. Add, <laughs> add some tequila and you'll get what a Michelada or whatever. You uh, yeah. <laughs> that might be a little bit exotic for my beer drinking. Oh. <laughs> well, this, this was, and let me tell you, I handed it, I took a sip and I handed it to Manny and Manny was like, Oh, that's, that's now the summer drink because yeah, it I is can't wait to try that. Oh, I know I got the Topo Chico in the garage. I can't wait. <laughs> Get on it. I t- it's, it. The thing about it though, is they go down easy. You know, <laughs> it's, it's so refreshing. Yeah. Um, it, and it's, you know, what's interesting. It's more spirit forward than say anything that has like a bunch of mixes to it. However, right. because you're not adding all that sugar, you really are removing a lot of the negative effects of the alcohol, if you will, like headaches and hangovers. Yeah. And st- I, honestly, especially if you're drinking- Most of that oil, comes from the sugar. It's coming from the sugar. Yeah. Um, and so if you remove that, you know, having a few of these in the afternoon after some yard work is not a problem, you know? And Great take your Terrazyme. <laughs> yeah, take your Terrazyme and you go, right? I love it, I love it. All right, Susan, <laughs> what, else, since, what else? Yeah, go ahead. Since we just, since you were talking about lime oil, that just made, that reminded me of something. I hadn't even thought about it for this, but this reminded me of it. And it's a great, easy summer treat um, is to take and cut up a fresh mango, a nice, really ripe mango, uh-huh. sprinkle it with a dropper, you know, just put it in a bowl, drop or two of lime oil, toss it around. And then toss some toasted co- unsweetened coconut shreds with it. Wow. Toss it all together. Super easy, super yummy. Just that's like going to easy the island. Dessert. It's really good. Yeah, just like the mango with just a couple drops of lime right on it, mixed together, nothing else. Delicious. Oh, that sounds really no, good. I like to go spicy with that down the yeah. south of the border because then I do the tahini. mango with the lime and the tahini. And yeah. Of the bomb baguette. Well, and isn't that what um, isn't that what Leslie said she did? She did watermelon with I think yeah. lime and tahini, and she said it was really delicious. In in Guatemala, and I know they all over Mexico. You know, you go, and there are wonderful ladies who have just spears of you know pineapple and watermelon and everything just in a cone, and you just order it up, and they just put tahini all over it, and then lime juice everywhere. And off you go, and you're just like drooly happiness. It's just so good. It's, it's the most delicious thing ever. And it, it does, it feels like you're like, I don't know, it's, it feels so exotic to me. I guess we don't eat a lot of, we don't eat a lot of mango around here. <laughs> it does, that's fancy, but I don't know. I'm going to have to try that. All right. Uh, Susan, you've got more, don't you? I know you've I got do more. have I another. It. Yep. I got two more, but I'm going to show you this one quick because I just had my Sunday delivered. And so I want to share it with you. Oh. So this is, um, it's just vanilla ice cream, but you can use whatever kind of ice cream you want. And we're going to talk about the chocolate sauce. And I threw a couple of dried apricots in there. I can never find my camera. There we go. There. <laughs> I know it's great. Okay. So the, the chocolate sauce is actually a chocolate ganache. And the easiest way to do this is to do a one-to-one ratio of heavy cream and really good semi-sweet chocolate chips. So I go for the Ghirardelli. That's my favorite. You can use whatever, you know, whatever you like. Um, And yes, absolutely. You can use your Hershey or Nestle or, you know, whatever. And so um, usually for our family, for if if I'm doing a dessert where we're going to use this and it's, it's going to be a sauce, like it'll harden up, but it's not like 
you're not going to frost a cake with it. It's a little more runny, you know, than that. Um, I'll do a cup of chocolate chips and a cup of heavy cream. You can put it in a saucepan or in a microwave safe bowl and um, microwave and stir to, till you get the chocolate all melted or heat it slowly on, um, you know, a, a small burner and just kind of watch it very closely. Chocolate can scorch easily, but the fact that it's in the cream actually really lessens the fact that that, you know, the likelihood of that happening. So just keep it low and keep stirring. And you know how chocolate chips are. They're intended to hold together in your little cookies. And so they don't seem to melt. And then all of a sudden they're burned. And so if you just kind of keep stirring, they'll lose their shape faster and incorporate it into the cream. So kind of like hand whip it a little bit and you'll get a really nice texture once you take it off the heat. And then you can put in some orange oil. So this is gonna be an orange chocolate ganache. It's really yummy. For um, a cup of each, I would probably do 10 drops of wild orange, but I really like to taste the, the oil and the flavor of the oil. So play with it and see you know how you like it, how your family likes it, or if you have a smaller group of people you're fixing it for, just cut it down. You can do it as little a tablespoon of each if you just want a skinny little bit or like a quarter of a cup of each if you just want enough for one or two servings. It will keep for a long time in the refrigerator, basically as long as your, half, your um, heavy cream, you know, will stay good. And so you can store it covered in the refrigerator and then just heat it up a little bit when you want to use it. And you can put this over absolutely anything. When we yeah. have a big family gathering and we have everything from, you know, won't eat anything fattening to, you know, whatever, lots of kids and all that, I'll do a big tray of brownies, a lot of cut up fruit, some homemade whipped cream, and this chocolate ganache. And we kind of set it out like a bar and everybody can make their own. If they just want the fruit, they just have the fruit. If they just want fruit and whipped cream, they can do that. If they want the whole nine yards, they can fix up a brownie with fruit, whipped cream, and the chocolate ganache, and it's really, really yummy. So that's a, you can you can do so much with it, and it's really good. That syrup would be good on Romelia's little mini cheese cakes. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. I was just thinking even peppermint would be good, like a like a York peppermint patty. Absolutely. Ice okay. cream, now, you know? I am not big on chocolate and peppermint. I know that's really weird. I know I have to make myself make those peppermint brownies and at Christmas because I, I, I just don't go there. But yes, you could totally do peppermint. If you're like a peppermint chip ice cream kind of a person and you want to put a peppermint in your chocolate ganache for sure. Or the other thing we had talked about earlier was a little cassia or cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, direction would be so good. I would go with yeah. ginger too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like Tammy was saying, the cardamom, cardamom mm -hmm. and chocolate is amazing okay i'm gonna throw this out i have not tried this with oil but i'm gonna have to now that i'm thinking of it black pepper is also really good in chocolate mm, yes. it gives a really nice bite you got to be really careful like start small i know romilia is not buying this at all <laughs> oh i you think can also i'm going red i totally chili. think like red chili yeah. and chocolate is delicious yes, so you could put a little ground red chili if you wanted and the cinnamon um oil or you could, um, I want to try a little bit of black pepper oil. I did that once with brownies of really like decades ago, yes. not with black pepper oil. And that's why I want to try that. I used actual black pepper in a little bit of a chocolate frosting on a brownie that I was doing for a work function back in the day. And it was really good. Just a little bit of a bite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because that little bit. Yeah, of see, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to bring it and make you try it. <laughs> yeah, but that's how that works with the sweet and the heat is it's yeah. when I make my chili sauce, I always add chocolate because the sweetness of the chocolate brings out the full flavor of the chili yeah. and you get such a great, it's just filled. Or like put a more salt flavor. in your chocolate, you know, it kind of yeah. opens up that flavor. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting the reunion. <laughs> I love it. I love it. The Midland reunion, right? Um, oh, Fun. we lost. Um I don't know. Yeah. She popped off. That's She'll pop off. Go. Yeah. So, um, I love that. Um, I think that sounds amazing. I think I have more to share, so I'm going to do it quick. Cause we're going to run over time. And then I know, um, we still have a few from everybody else too. So one quick thing I wanted to throw out was that simple syrup, because as you heard Romelia showed, told how to make it 
it is so easy. And then Susan was like, I do it the lazy way, which I get it. Right. But honest to goodness, it is the easiest thing. And it, it it's versatile. That's what I like is you can make, you know, you can make little tiny bottles or you, I love this type of jar or bottle that has this resealable lid on it. It's easy. It keeps in the fridge really well. All you're going to do is I take equal parts of raw sugar and water. Um, honestly, for our household, I actually kind of do it less sugar and more water. So I do more like two parts water to one part um, sugar. That's just because we're not, we're not big sugar people, right? Um, and so that works for us. Um, so all you're going to do is boil the water, or not even boil. You bring the water up in temperature till it's almost to a boil. Then you add in your sugar and you stir. As soon as it's completely, you know, incorporated and, and totally melted, you see no granules anymore, which is really quick. That's a crazy quick, right? You just turn the heat off and let it sit. Then once it's kind of the room temp, you pour it in your bottle and that's when you add your oil. You don't add your oil when it's in the pot and hot. You add it once it's room temp. What's great is like with this one here, we usually have in this a variety of different citrus oils. And this is what the kids will use. They'll use this along with, you can get that organic lemon from Costco, it's Italian. It's the yummiest thing in the world. Um, they'll take, yes, yes. They'll take some of that. It's volcano, right? Um, some of that. And then a little tiny bit of this and then water over ice. And it's this wonderful lemonade. Um, and then of course, Manny and I'll use it for different things. But you can do smaller ones and do like a good ginger, a, you know, a rosemary. You can do whatever it is and have it all pre together. And it makes it so that anytime you do want to make something, it's super simple and quick. So um, don't be afraid to make simple syrup. It's when you compare it to when you go to the store and you buy all that corn syrupy mixture stuff. This is a game changer in as far as removing all of that crap out of your diet. Um, and the kids love it. The thing I love is that even if they like went nuts and poured way too much because I don't make it that sweet, you know, it's still not that bad. It's still not even equal to like one of those Arizona teas or whatever, you know, as far as the amount of sweetener that they're getting. So it's really, really wonderful. Now you can go the other way. You can make it thicker, reduce it down more. Like Romelia was saying, let that evaporation happen, add more sugar than water, and then go ahead and make like a nice syrup. That's truly more syrupy. So that's what I like. You get the, you get to pick. So experiment and play. So that's one thing. The other one I have to even, oh, the other one is my cucumber lime. So, uh, you know, we're kind of keeping on a theme here because this has been our favorite drinks for like summer, but you know, you remember we skipped winter cause we were in Florida. So we've just been on a perpetual summer for almost, well, for almost a year now. And so we found a lot of good summer drinks. What, what can I say? Which is good for us in this case. So with this one, this is a super, super simple. This is a cucumber lime. I do like this one. Um, I would encourage you though, just try a lot of different brands. If you live, like we're lucky in New Mexico, we live in a place where we, we have distilleries. If you can go to one of your local places and get some local, vodka is the easiest thing to get local. Most places when they're trying to start off doing distilling, distillery, distilling, yeah, they're going to make vodka, right? So try local. Um, at gins you can get, you know, wonderful too. And then see if they have different flavors because it's so fun to experiment that way. This one is just one that's good. And honestly, you can find it anywhere. So I thought it was the easier one to put into a video like this. I didn't want to have an example of something you can't get where you live. So this is just cucumber lime. With this, all we do is put this into the shaker. So put, you know, an ounce or however much you want um, into the shaker. Then you're going to add to it two drops of lime and one drop of spearmint. All right, I promise you, this is like amazing. Give it a nice little shake, pour it over ice, top with whatever sparkling water you like, and you're good. This is add a little, maybe like a cute cucumber to it. You can muddle a cucumber if you're super down on cucumber. Um, it is so refreshing and delicious. You can also make it with a tequila if you wanted, if you wanted to go through the, you know, not the trouble, but the little bit more work of making sure that you get the cucumber flavor in there. But honestly, it's just perfect in vodka. So really, really simple and easy. Another one that is like no added sugar. You know, you're just, you're just enjoying the drink. Um, which I really like. I like that in, in summer drinks. So, um, okay. So Miss Joan, what's our cheater hummus? 
So, cheater hummus. So this is super easy and I'm gonna actually do it for you. <clears throat> so I have some hummus and this hummus is actually, this is store-bought and it's actually kind of thick. It's just, it's from the co-op down the street. They make theirs thicker than I normally would make. But so I have this, um, off of there. So I have in here just a little pour of toasted sesame oil, mm. right? Which you can get anywhere. I love toasted sesame oil. So that's going to get one drop of turmeric. Mm. And it's going to get a couple of drops because I'm such a ginger head, a couple of drops of ginger. Oh, this sounds right. Good. So that's really yummy with your toasted sesame oil. Just give that a little whiz with a whisk. A little, you know, everyone should have little mini cocktail whisks, right? Because they're handy. <laughs> and then just pour that over your store bought hummus in your container mm. and kind of just toss it around and whisk it in. And there you go. Good. That's simple to just really give your hummus a totally different taste, right? I, I just love hummus because there's so many things you can do with it, right? You can throw some artichokes, artichoke hearts in there if you're making it yourself, right? But this is, let's see. I could mm -hmm. live on hummus. Mm. And that sesame oil, that is such an upgrade right there. I love I sesame love oil. toasted sesame oil. Right. So, so look good. for it. You can get it anywhere pretty much. Just a nice, it gives you that warm, kind of roasty flavor. Yeah. Right. And so this great. is great with veggies or on crackers too. But this is a really good mix then to have with cut up bell peppers and carrots mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Sounds or amazing. you know toss it with some noodles tofu. and some, and i've yeah. done that with tofu joan the toasted sesame seed yeah. oil with the ginger and the turmeric mm -hmm. those two oils together are just so i it's it's an explosion of flavor right it's so good yeah and I I've, I've done that and just braised tofu with that it's so delicious i mean yeah. just to eat by itself <laughs> nothing yeah. else well and you could even right take that and thin it with a little bit of water Put it with some use it as a dressing. And some yep. cubed, up, cubed up tofu and chopped green onions and stuff for like a cold pasta salad. Yeah. That sounds like an amazing dressing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Now so, I'm going to go get some toasted sesame seed oil because I just throw the oils in the hummus and stir it. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. Right. But I, I am full on trailer park and mine in. <laughs> But that, you know, that's what I do that all the time. I need time. to upgrade to some sesame oil. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, that's sometimes what I'll do for my breakfast bowl. I use either flax oil or I'll use the toasted sesame, depending, but it's so simple. Throw a little yeah. essential aminos in there and you have a whole salad dressing whisked together that you can put on anything. That's like versatile. I'm really yeah. excited about all of the ideas from just that blend well and just the you know the thing about especially with hummus or with dressings play outside the box what appeals to you right mm -hmm. you want to go super citrus go super citrus right my normal breakfast bowl dressing in the morning is lemongrass and pink pepper with flax mm -hmm. oil and a little essential aminos right and put that together so there's just all kinds kinds of things right don't limit yourself play with it right be with Susan, put in that, we'll put a little black pepper in your chocolate. Put a little, I mean, you could do that. You could do black pepper in with your hummus, black pepper and lemon. Love it. In with plain hummus would be fantastic, right? There's so, you can just do, you just play. play yeah. Especially with something like, you know, hummus or just making like a drink. If it tastes like crap, okay. You know, you try, pour it out, try again. It's going to be okay. Somebody will eat it or drink it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? It's okay, but you'll be amazed at what you find, you yeah. know, um, actually I was goofing around with the, my next one, um, was a total goof around in that. Nor I love a, 
kombucha. I love kombucha. And one of my favorite things is actually alcoholic kombucha, which is hard to come by. Okay. It's not the easiest thing to find. Um, we've had it here in town from time to time. It seems to come and go, but, oh, it's just so good because I like that. It's not sweet. I like that tangy, tangy flavor. Um, but then you get whatever, you know, I'm a big ginger girl with, with my kombucha, you know, you get just this wonderful flavor. So, you know, in hanging one day and enjoying my kombucha, I thought I bet vodka would be really good in this. (laughs) Turns out it's amazing. Right. So here's the fun though, with your oils is that, so I have these two. I have never had this brand of kombucha. I've never had kombucha in a can. Okay. So this is an interesting thing, different. I've only ever had it from a glass bottle or a tap. So I found these at my local little store here because I had to run to a store that also had alcohol to do today's class. And that, you know, there's not a lot of those around where I live. Um, So this one here, has anyone ever had this happy leaf kombucha before? I'm sorry, uh, Joan. I've seen it, but I've not had it. Well, the flavors, it's a beautiful can. The flavors are intriguing though. Like I'm a, I'm a ginger lemon girl when you know what I mean? When it comes to my, I like that. And I like, like the cleanse ones, you know, but this is very interesting. When I do the ginger lemon, what I do is I just pour, I pour my kombucha out over ice, which I don't normally do. Okay. When I drink it, I don't normally do that. And then I add my vodka. And instead of adding the oil into the kombucha, I will do the trick where I just put a little bit on my finger and just do the rim of the glass. It is so good. And it is so refreshing and delicious. Um, You know, kombucha in general is just delicious, but that added little kick um, and then the flavor, you know, you can play with it. So with this one, I would definitely do some grapefruit oil on the rim. And then there's this one, which I thought, okay, lavender, cranberry lavender. So a little bit of lavender, not much, just a little bit of lavender, a hint of lavender on the lip of the glass, right? It's just, I'm excited. I'll I'll be trying this one this evening. (laughs) Because I'm so good. Well, and so different. It's just playing. And you know what? It might taste like crap, but here's the thing. I've done it with the ginger lime and it tastes, or ginger lemon and it tastes fantastic. If you don't like the ginger oil, if you're not a ginger person, do lemon on the ginger lemon. You know what I mean? If you just like the hint of ginger, you're not like, like I could just suck. I mean, and I do like get ginger root and I love it. I like it spicy and oh, it's just amazing. But any flavors of kombucha there, we've got an oil that complements it. Right. And then you add that little bit of vodka and you've got yourself a wonderful, really fresh um, kombucha cocktail. This is packing more of a flavor punch than some of the other more focused on like um, sparkling water drinks that we've been talking about. But if you're not a kombucha person, go that way. But, oh, it is so good. It feels a little bit naughty because, you know, it's kombucha and you're supposed to be doing like a nice, uh, you know, healthy thing. But let's be real. Like, you know, the alcoholic kombucha is the best stuff in the world. Romelia, enjoy the Midland, Texas party and have Bye. a happy holiday. Um, but yeah, find any flavors and play. And that was totally just like a playing like, huh. cause you know what happened? I, I really wanted a drink and I didn't have any of my other stuff, but I had kombucha and I'm not going to just sit and sip on my vodka. Cause I'm just, you know, not that gal. Um, so I was like, well, this sounds interesting <laughs> and it was delicious. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'm so happy. Um, especially with that little bit of on the rim, it makes you feel special. It's really good. So that, that was my last one. My bag is empty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Susan, did you have, you, do you have one more? I have one more and it's, it's really simple and quick, but it's a really great, um, recipe for summer and for grownups and kids and parties and, you know, whatever you got going on. So it is a tangerine fruit dip. It's mm-hmm. super easy to make. My kids have made it for me before, you know, before an event or whatever. So you're gonna use, and this is a big recipe. So like, if you are not feeding a crowd, you may wanna cut it down and it's very easy to cut in half. So it's two eight ounce packages of cream cheese, Mm. softened, a cup of vanilla yogurt, Mm. uh, and you could use a plain yogurt too. I'm not really fond of flavored, especially vanilla flavored yogurts. Like I like to put my own vanilla in. So if you wanna use plain yogurt, that's fine too. Half a cup of honey and then excuse me, the recipe calls for two drops of tangerine or wild orange, 
with that's like three cups of dip. I'm probably going more towards eight, but yeah. I, again, really like to have the flavor of the oil carry through. So, you know, play with that and see what you like. All you have to do is mix this all together. It will mix better if you have like a hand mixer or if you can put it in your stand mixer to get it together, but it's not impossible to do it by hand. I have done it by hand in a pinch. It's just a little bit easier with a, with a mixer. And then you're just gonna serve that with whatever fruit you have, you know, fruit salad, or if you just wanna slice up fruit and kind of do like a, a fruit tray, it's really yummy. Um, to dip, you could use it as a topping for something. You could do kind of like a, you know, smoothie bowl kind of a thing and, you know, put it in that or incorporate it. You can throw nuts, coconut, you know, whatever you want on top of that. And, um, you know, just kind of make it fun. It's a really great um, thing to take along to a get together, you know, over the summer holidays. Oh, absolutely. Or healthy if you're just trying to get some more fruit into your kids, which I've done too. That sounds amazing though. Anything with cream cheese and tangerine. I know that sounds good. <laughs> yes. Like, so a yummy. like a cream sickle yeah, dip. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's and you can use basically any of the citrus oils that you really like, right? Pick your favorite mm -hmm. citrus and toss it in there. So you could definitely, um, you know, change things around a little bit. I like these because these were all really good, like refreshing summertime recipes. But here's what I really love. They were so easy. Yeah. Everyone's was really, you know, it's all of the time. You don't yeah. want to be slaving away, right? right? You want yeah. something that's really like bright, bold flavors, refreshing and super easy. It's what summer is all about. Yes. Yeah, I love sure. that. So true. And I think that we've given a lot of options, certainly a lot of beverages, several treats to make. We've got your appetizers and your desserts covered, right? <laughs> And then, you know, just put somebody out there on the grill to make dinner or lunch and you're good or pack some sandwiches or, you know, make one of those salads with that amazing salad dressing ideas from Joan, you know, versatility, right? Um, but this was great fun. Thank you guys so much. So the recipes will be on our website. Um, I will hunt, hunt you all down to get them. I know that we've got Susan's um, um, so that we can get them up there for people. The website is ravensnestessentials.com. I will get them up as soon as I possibly can, as soon as I, in fact, I'll just put them up as they come into me. How does that sound? And I don't want to hold up in case people are, are waiting. Um, but this has been great fun. If you have favorite recipes, please let us know um, so that we can learn. We're always learning so many things. If you want to look up, you know, you want even more recipes. I don't know if you've ever looked at the doTERRA, the blog. Okay. It's like you go to doTERRA.com, just type in doTERRA.com blog, blog or doTERRA blog in your search thing. And it'll pop up the amount of recipes that are in there that are so easy and so like health conscious and, and really, really good quality food. They're not just sort of like, you know, weird test kitchen food where it's like, let's figure out a way to stick some oils. No, they're like really good, solid recipes. I know that um, Tammy's husband makes the most amazing chicken wings with these different, um, those sauces. What are they? The different ones that he does, Tammy, that those are from the blog, right? Yeah. The, the two of them blog, uh, one the cardamom and honey, I think it is. And the other one is, I don't remember lemon, rosemary or something like that. It's yeah. just delicious. Yeah. yeah. And it's really easy because you just buy store-bought chicken wings and then you just put the stuff on it and cook them and you're great to go. And people go bonkers. Like I've been to places where he brings them and it's like, you know, the stereo, like, you know, piranha city at the table. Like people are just like, ah, and the, and what's funny is you would think a lot, not many people are adventurous with like cardamom, but when you've had it, it then you're hooked. Um, but that's one of those things where the recipe is just amazing, um, but still easy. Right. So go check that out for sure. Um, thank yeah, you. And he'll also uh, use like basil mm -hmm. or cumin when he's uh, making like a, a rub or something to put on his before grilling. So yeah. lots of versatility. Yeah. So many great ideas. So um, get your oils out of your medicine cabinet and into your kitchen, I think is kind of the 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 motto of the day right and out into the yard apparently because 
<laughs> it's a gorgeous day. It was amazing. We had this drizzly rain all day. Oh, it was poetic. I could just wallow in it all day. So thank you guys so much and have a great day. And, and Susan, Susan did a great slideshow with a bunch of recipes. We'll get that up for you guys. Okay. So perfect. Sounds Bye. great. See you guys.